Section 2.1 is called Exploring Parallel Lines. Our goal is to identify relationships among the measures of the angles formed by intersecting lines. Let's look at the Explore the Math. A sports equipment manufacturer builds portable basketball systems like those shown here. These systems can be adjusted to different heights. When the adjusting arm is moved, the measures of the angles formed with the backboard and the supporting post change. So these angles will change. The adjusting arm forms a transversal. A transversal is a line that intersects two or more other lines at distinct points. So these are two other lines and here's our transversal that intersects these two lines. So when the system is adjusted, the backboard stays perpendicular to the ground. So the, here's our backboard it's going to stay at 90 degrees to our ground and it's parallel to the supporting post. This is the supporting post and this is our backboard. These two lines are parallel. So when a transversal intersects two parallel lines, how are the angle measures related? So our first step is to identify our transversal and our parallel lines. Transversal is this line. It's blue. It's nicely marked. So let's identify our parallel lines in this first one. So our backboard is parallel to our supporting post. How are these angle measures related? You can take a second and pause the video if you like and actually measure them to see. If you measured them, you'd find that these are the exact same, these have the exact same angle measure. Let's do the same thing here. Let's identify our transversal and our parallel lines. Well, our parallel lines are these ones because our backboard is parallel to our supporting post. And our transversal, the line that intersects these two lines, is this line right here. How do these two angle measures relate to one another? How are these two angle measures alike? Again, take a second to measure them if you like. If you measure them, you find that those two were exactly the same. Pretty nifty. These two angles that you identified to have the exact same measure, these two pairs of angles, are called corresponding angles. So let's think back on what we just learned and see if we can do reflecting A. Reflecting A says, use the relationships you observed to predict the measures of as many of the angles A to G in this diagram as you can. Explain each of your predictions. I'm going to teach you guys how to use something called a statement justification chart. You have your statement that you write down and then you need to prove that it is in fact correct. Our first step in this problem is to identify which line is our transversal and which are parallel lines. So what's the line that intersects two or more lines? Remember, that's the definition of a transversal. I think it's this one. So I'm going to label this T. And our two parallel lines, well, these two lines are parallel because they have the nice little red arrow that means that they're never going to cross. So I'll call this L1. And I'll call this one L2. We just learned about corresponding angles. So if we take a look back, we can see that our corresponding angles, the angles that were of equal measure, were on the same side of our transversal, but also on the same side of our two parallel lines. That is, they were both above our transversal and to the right of our parallel lines. So we're given this angle of 140 degrees. What other angle is below our parallel lines and to the left of our transversal. Let's see, that one's above. That one's the angle we're actually looking for. This one's below and to the left. So this is gonna be our other corresponding angle. So my statement then is going to be that F equals 140 degrees. I know that F is equal to 140 degrees because it's our corresponding angle. So that's going to be my justification. Now we have to use a different property. Um, 
What about our supplementary angles property? That is, two angles that form a straight line add up to 180 degrees. Let's use this to find angle A. So angle A will be equal to 180 degrees minus 140 degrees. Why, you may ask. If we look back up here, 140 degrees plus angle A is going to give us this whole line, the measure of the angle of a line, which is 180 degrees. So then my statement, A is equal to 180 degrees minus 140 degrees, A is equal to 40 degrees. What's my justification going to be? Well, it's the supple it's supplementary, it's a supplementary angle. Hmm, what to do next? Well, I can use my corresponding angles property again. 40 degrees, or angle A, is above our parallel line and it's to the left of our transversal. Another angle that is above our parallel line and to the left of our transversal is angle D. So now, I'm going to say that D is equal to 40 degrees. And my justification for that? It's a corresponding angle to A. So now we can just use the postulates we learned from the preview, which, if you remember, were what vertically opposite angles were and what supplementary angles were. I'm going to find angle C. I'm going to say that C is equal to 40 degrees. Why, you ask? Because if we look here, a and C are vertically opposite angles. So C is vertically opposite of A. I want you to try to find the measures of angle B, angle E, and angle G yourself. Next, we're going to look at a whole bunch of definitions. Okay, first definition, interior angles. Any angles formed by a transversal and two parallel lines that lie inside the parallel lines. These angles inside our parallel lines right here are called interior angles. Exterior angles are any angles formed by a transversal and two parallel lines that lie outside of the parallel lines. So angles E, F, H, and G are exterior angles. Corresponding angles we've already talked about. One interior angle and one exterior angle that are non-adjacent and on the same side of the transversal. In other words, angles that are on the same sides of our lines. If they're on the right side of the transversal, then this one will be on the right side of the transversal. If it's below our parallel line, then the corresponding angle will be below our parallel line. And there's a converse. A statement that is formed by switching the premise and the conclusion of another statement. So in summary, when a transversal intersects a pair of parallel lines, the corresponding angles that are formed by each parallel line and the transversal are equal. So angle A and angle E are both on the same side of the transversal and they're both above the parallel lines, so they are equal because they're corresponding angles. Same can be said for B and F, C and G, and D and H. If a transversal intersects a pair of lines creating equal corresponding angles, the pair of lines is parallel. So that is the converse of this statement up here. So when a transversal intersects parallel lines, the corresponding angles are equal. But when a transversal intersects a pair of lines creating equal angles, the pair of lines is parallel. A couple of things we need to know. When a transversal intersects a pair of non-parallel lines, the corresponding angles are not equal. So in order for corresponding angles to equal, our lines have to be parallel. They can never intersect. 
There are also relationships among the measures of eight angles formed when a transversal intersects two parallel lines. So we'll learn about these in the future.